and welcome back to the quarry garden. Today I've started this huge task of digging out all of these bulbs and perennials from around these trees that we lost following Storm Arwen. I've waited till now so I could see everything that would emerge in the spring so I can dig out as much as I can and replant elsewhere either in these spring borders or down in the quarry. And just to give you a bit of context of where this is, these two borders either side of the swing here or on the top of the quarry um, similar conditions, very stony ground, very little soil, but it's amazing what you can do with a pickaxe. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm going to take these around to a new area of the spring border that I'm developing up at the back here on the bank side. I've got some very special bulbs there. So this is a new um, section of the spring borders. I've um, started developing this this small bankside area last summer, dug out all of the grass, all of the weeds, and it now joins on to the main spring border at the front of the garden, one big border. I added some uh, rhododendrons and some pyrrhias for winter structure, and a few euphorbias, a few other shrubs, but it predominantly consists of spring bulbs. This is in deep shade, probably from June onwards, obviously from all of the trees that we we'll have here, so I wanted to do, I wanted it to be as showy as possible for um, the early months of the year. Got the daffodils, which obviously provide early interest. There's some foxgloves in here as well. And I've added some of these plants here, or these bulbs here, I should say. And these are fritillary imperialis bulbs. And they're just stunning. If you want an exotic, showy um, plant for early spring, these have got to be top of the list. They're just gorgeous. They come in three colours, red, yellow and orange. And if you plant them in a drift, and I've seen that done before in a few um, country gardens where I've visited, they just look amazing. So I'm going to give it a go. They can be tricky to grow. I've had them once before in a different part of the garden in an area that was very wet, winter wet, and it rotted the bulbs and I didn't succeed. So this time I've tried again, second attempt, and it's worked this time. A few things to be aware of, they're like free draining soil. That's what this is here. And the, the heavy feeders, you need to provide um, a high potash feed in early spring when the leaves start to emerge from the ground. And I did that. Seems to have worked. I've got flowers on all of these ones. Not so much these ones there. Could be that I didn't plant them deep enough or I didn't feed them enough granular feed in the spring. I'll try again next year and if they don't um, flower next year I will dig them out and plant them deeper. Um, the other thing you could do is what I've done here, I planted them on a few centimetres of grit and I planted the bulbs on the side because the bulbs have a hollow in the centre and they can rot and I think that's what's happened to me before could be a way of sort of preventing that from happening. So I did that this time, it seems to have worked. And the only other thing to mention, oh yes, they like to be planted deep, about 10 to 12 inches, similarly distance apart. I didn't do that because I wanted more of a drift here, um, immediate impact. And I've got it and I love it and I can't wait for them to flower. One thing to add though, if you're going to plant them, maybe not plant them next to your front door or your back door, because they can be a bit smelly. Um, but just keep the foxes away and the, and the deer and also any um, birds, partridges, pheasants, which I have, which tend to dig up the bulbs. So I'm going to plant them behind me here. I've got several I potted on last, um, last autumn, last September. I grew some in pots and put some direct into the ground. I have managed to get two orange ones, which I couldn't get last year, nor the red ones. These are all yellow from the garden centre the other day. So I'm going to plant them in with the ones that I've got and also the pulmonaria in a drift around the back here behind me. And we'll see what the results look like.
that's the Fritillaria um, planted now. Did I call them Fritillaria earlier? Or did I call them Fritillaries? I think it's even spelled the same. That's what happens in gardening. Different pronunciations of names. Anyhow, <laughs> that snow was planted along with some blue enzyme. And I'm just going to show you on the opposite side of this border, another very tiny border that I'm creating also. Look at these, Anemone coronaria. Aren't they just absolutely stunning? What a colour for spring. And where I'm going to add these is opposite where I was working earlier, because not only did I dig the grass out from the section to my left here to be part of the spring borders, I also decided to um, dig up the grass which was in this area, which is a bit of a utility area. You've got sheds, nothing pretty here at all. So I've continued the edging of the path with the stones and I'm going to add these anemones. I missed the boat obviously to plant them as tubers and bulbs last year, but I'm going to plant them now as spring um, plants. I've already added a few carex grasses. I've got three carex grasses in here, which like um, pot shade. So they'll be fine under this shady spot. And I also added some of the pound daffodils that I had left. And I didn't add those until the second week in February. And look at them. How amazing is that? They've all got flowers on. So I'm going to add these anemones. They'll um, flower probably for the next month or so. And then midsummer they'll disappear under the ground and they'll re-emerge next spring. I've got some blue pansies, which I may or may not add. I'll see how it goes, but let's get planting. a lovely vibrant um, combination between the anemones, the blue of the anemone and the zingy carex grass, the green. Gorgeous, I love it. Haven't planted the pansies as yet, may plant those at a later date. I just thought I'd give you a view of how one side of the path now joins onto the main spring border on the opposite side. And what I'll do is I'll come back in a, a week or so and show you the final um, blooming of the Crown Imperials. Well, that's it for today. But just before I go, I wanted to say a special thank you to everybody that's subscribed. I'm over 200 subscribers now, and I couldn't be more delighted. So thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.